money. Let's see here. This... Every time, you gotta adjust where the mic is. Okay, so, happy Sunday. Good morning. If it's morning for you, anyway. Uh, that's an all right place, I guess. Uh, what are we doing today? Well, of course, continuing to work on Glowing Telegram. Uh, as has been the case for the last, <laughs> what, 10 months? It's been a while. Uh, what are we doing, though? Uh, so last stream, uh, I was working on getting a bit of code working. Right? It was the audio transcription code. And I forget exactly where we were on that. Um, hmm. Thinking about those unused uh, fields. But that's fine, probably fine. Uh, so there were some issues. I forget all of the all the issues there were. There were a few. Um, one issue was that in our Pulumi stack, uh, in the structure. Let's get full screen here. Uh, one issue was that, as it turns out, if we want to use the GPU resources. Uh, in our job, also added a timeout. Uh, <laughs> ask me why. Um, you know, so we have this container definition, uh, container properties here for the ECS task that runs to do the uh, to run our uh, Rust program that uh, does speech to text using OpenAI Whisper. And uh, you need this environment variable, apparently, for the default container image uh, that's provided when you're doing this to enable things. Let's, let's move this down a bit. Over there. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that was one thing that was keeping it from being able to actually utilize GPU. Uh, and... Uh, what else was there? Maybe that was the only issue there. I think there were a few issues. Uh, all of this is committed. I have this uh, pull request where I've been kind of everything we've been doing in the last several streams with um, Palumi. Uh, and Glowing Telegram is in this PR. At some point, I will merge it, but here we have all the different commits over since uh, mid last month. Figuring out various things. Um, oh, yeah. So, one issue was that we were having an issue saving the results to DynamoDB. Uh, so, this. Copilot strikes again, and me not paying attention also strikes again. So NS is a number set, which is not the same thing as a, a list of numbers. Uh, the values have to be unique, and the token values we get from the results from uh, the Whisper program is not a unique set of numbers. It is a list of token numbers. Uh, so that was an issue. It was very confusing because the, the error from DynamoDB, uh, this is why this changed, and I don't think this actually needed this change, uh, but it's an error about non-uniqueness when setting transcription, some error like that, but it had nothing to do with this or this. It actually had to do with an internal value inside of the, the document being stored in DynamoDB. Uh, yeah, so anyway, and I just... I didn't, I didn't revert this because this is fine. It's harmless. Okay. Uh, and other things have changed. It's all here until I 
merge this commit and squash it and then it'll be gone <laughs> it'll be in it'll be in the pr history uh anyway so i actually have a plan for today uh it's been a while since i've uh, I was thinking about the stream yesterday and what we were going to do and notice I didn't put a part here where I do a recap. So already, uh, deviating from plan. Uh, so last time around, I kept on teasing the idea of doing the step function. Uh, let's go back to the ADBS console and just, uh, Ooh, can I restore? There we go. So this is similar to what we were looking at uh, in the last stream of doing a step function that's going to orchestrate processing all the video files for a stream um, and do the audio to text transcription and then use OpenAI's API to summarize each segment of the transcript. And then the idea will be to feed back the summary or a um, I guess the summary, some context, right? Back into the prompt for the next transcription job. And so we will serially process each of the videos. It did occur to me after the last stream that one thing we can do, because in the data that we're collecting, hey, Mango Booty, how's it going? Good morning. In the data that we're collecting in the uh, ingestion job where we get the each of the video files into s3 and we kick off uh, a batch job we're doing silence detection and so we can detect when there are silences and where they start and end so conceivably one could like segment this set of video files into here's part where there's uh talking and then potentially do something where those things are processed in parallel, assuming that we didn't want to carry context between those parts. So you, you can imagine like every hour I take a break, right? So, but the, the video files are 20 minutes long. So there's like three or four video files. Um, and somewhere in there are silences where I'm taking my break and so we could process those like a set, uh, a, a slice of the video files um, and their transcription and doing the summarization and then do the next one and the next one um, on the assumption that the context between those isn't super important or that we can have some initial context that would be applied to all of them which might be a thing to do. This is simpler. And this is just going to carry over the context across all the videos of the stream. And I think that also makes sense, you know, conceptually to think of like, uh, we are going to be talking about like, generally at the beginning of a stream, I'm going to be talking about what the stream is going to be about, what I'm going to do, what it is, what's going on. And then we're going to build up kind of context conceptually of what the stream is about throughout it. So I think this makes sense and is also simpler. Um, it's not as fast as it could be if we could like do those things in parallel, right? But um, I think this will be good. Uh, so, but to do this, there is at least one thing we need to do. Actually, two things, two things we need to do. Uh, two, two things we need to do. Uh, one is uh, all the stuff in this diagram exists except for this lambda. So we need at least a placeholder lambda to kind of simulate its function. And then um, we've not actually, like I've not saved. I could, I could create the step function. I don't want to do it through the console though. I want to have Pulumi create the step function for me from, you know, a, what's on disk so that, um, you know, we can change it and manage it through Git and uh, use Pulumi to update it and all of those things, right? So back to the plan. Uh, before we do any of that, one of the things that I think is interesting as we think about creating a Lambda function that calls OpenAI's API is um, I came across 
uh, or I say came across, I, I get emails, right? When there are changes to open AIs, uh, APIs and services and stuff. And I've had this in my list of things to look at for a while now. Uh, here we go. Structured outputs for OpenAI's API, right? So they introduced this idea that of JSON mode. And I think we're using that now. Let me go find where we're doing this today. So that's in API. We have handlers chat. So we get our, our client from OpenAI Dive and we create a chat with some parameters. Build parameters is my function. Yeah. Right, so we're gonna give a model. I think this currently defaults to uh what 01? Yeah. And then we say, hey, response format should be a JSON object. And then here's our messages, our chat messages, right? So we uh, say, here's some text, here's the role, system assistant, our user, and uh, we don't give it a name for different participants of the same role. That's interesting. Um, yeah, so it's, it's we're already using this idea of having a JSON response format, for JSON mode. So that means that in our prompt, so the prompt, our, the the text of the prompt that's inside of the messages that's like higher level than this, right? In the in our front end that's calling this API that calls the back end, the OpenAI API, um, that prompt says something like, you know, uh, analyze this. Uh, you are a uh, SEO optimizing something something something. Generate a video description based on this transcript. Now the prompt that we're going to use for for what we're going to do over uh, so many tabs uh, over here is going to be slightly different because it's going to be like um, I don't know. We'll have to engineer like exactly what that prompt should be, but something about summarize the tra the transcript of this part of the stream um, for use both as a input to um, a further, uh, as, as an input for a further prompt or something like that, or as an input to open a whisper for, uh, an initial prompt for the next segment of video, something like that. We'll probably have, we potentially could do multiple prompts and multiple rounds of calling, uh, in this Lambda. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to figure out how we want to exactly do that. But the idea is to distill some information that we'll use in this loop and also to um, save that information to DynamoDB on this record so that we are um, kind of extracting a lot of information about what was said in the video recording. Uh, on top of all the, the keyframes and the metadata that we're getting uh, already from more programmatic extraction of data. So yeah, here's here's an example. This was the um, one case that I was testing where I was running the batch job directly on the video. And we can see uh, what that transcript looks like. This is uh, a transcript of about 20 minutes of video here. Uh, probably less than that because this looks like it was the last video from a stream on the 14th. I did not say bye bye <laughs> so many times. This is it hallucinating uh, from the silence. Uh, something we'll be able to do something about, I think, because we do have the, the raw segments that have the timestamps of when it thinks that the words were said. Start and end here. And then we also have our silence detection, right? So we can cut off the transcript starting at 627 uh, through 662, which should be the end of the video. So I guess uh, it's about 11 minutes long, actually. Uh, anyway, okay, getting getting sidetracked, kind of introducing 
uh, current state. Uh, yeah, so while the JSON model improve mode improves model reliability for generating valid JSON outputs, it doesn't guarantee the models responsible conform to a particular schema, right? So uh, this part was really nice though, because in the past, before I started using this, when you would call the API from the glowing telegram front end, um, glowing telegram open. Nope. Well, just, just pretend, uh, when you click the button and you, uh, send, you know, to the, the, the prompt essentially with the transcript, it would come back and sometimes it would give you JSON or sometimes it would give you like markdown escaped. Like here's an example of some JSON, uh, or incomplete JSON or not validly formatted. Um, so definitely saved some annoyance having JSON mode. Uh, but they today, as in August, so it's been a while, uh, October, yeah, a couple months uh, since this came out and I'm finally getting around to it. Structured outputs in the API. Model generated outputs will exactly match JSON schemas provided by the developer. So we'll be able to spell out exactly what the response from the API should look like. Uh, yeah, so generating structured data from unstructured inputs. So you could imagine we could have a JSON schema that has like, give me tags, summarizing topics in the video. Give me uh, a title, give me a description, give me, you know, some other things. So we'll have to experiment. Uh, Okay, so they're introducing two forms of this. Structured outputs via tools. Okay, all outputs will match the supply tool, tool definitions, right? So here's a, an example API request. Here's kind of, you know, we saw in the code uh, how we're building a list of messages with different roles. And then what you do, what you can do, and I, I looked at this and I decided I didn't really want to do it, uh, before was you can define tools, right? And so you can define a, uh, a tool type function. Um, but this doesn't, this isn't code. This is going to define some parameters, a description of what the tool is, right? So parameters is a type object. It has some properties, table name and columns, columns is an array of strings that are some of these things, conditions, it's an array of objects, you know, it goes on and on. And then it says these are what are required and additional properties are not allowed. And so the, 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 the prompt here, you help users query for the data they're looking for by calling the query function. So here's the query function, right? And then the user says, look up all my orders in May of last year that were fulfilled but not delivered on time, right? And so then in the response, when we call the API with that kind of chat uh, completion call, chat completions, we get back JSON, right? That complies with the schema that was embedded inside of this tool. Rather than, um, I think in the actual API call, this gets embedded inside of a thing. But yeah, inside of that response, this, this just this JSON will exist, which complies with that schema and gives you, you know, some. <laughs> uh, LLM based, uh, results. Okay. Option two, a new option for the response form of parameter JSON schema via JSON schema, uh, useful in the model is not calling a tool, but rather responding to the user in a structured way. When a response format is supplied with strict true model outputs will not match the supplied schema. So this matches kind of how things are working 
in this code today where it's expected that the result of this kind of chat completion chain is going to be um, a JSON message. All right, so here is, you are a helpful math tutor. Solve uh, 8x plus 31 equals two. And the expected format is a math response that contains an object with an array of steps that are objects with property, uh, with an explanation and an output. Uh, and then there's a final answer. So then there are steps. Yeah. Okay. And then that looks like uh, you get a response that looks like this. So you have explanation and output. That's very cool. Safety is a top priority. Uh, uh huh. Still allow the model to refuse an unsafe request. There's a new refusal string value on API responses, which allows developers to pro programmatically detect if the model has generated a refusal instead of output matching the schema. That's good. When the response does not include a refusal and the model's response has not been prematurely interrupted, the model's response will reliably produce valid JSON matching the supplied schema. So here is an example of a chat completion response. Um, you can potentially get multiple different options. That's why you have choices here. Like those things above or at least the, the last one above would, I think, be embedded inside of this kind of structure. Um, in this case, the message is a refusal. Reason stop. Uh huh. Uh, they do have a Python and Node SDK, apparently. I have been using this uh, crate for Rust called OpenAI Dive which seems to be fairly uh, reliably updated. Last update was two days ago. And you can see structured, they even have an example of structured outputs. So, great. All right, because you know the JSON schema could be something that represents the uh, design of a UI or something, right? Separating final answer from supporting reasoning or additional commentary. We saw that above in the other example with the math answer. Constraint decoding. Let's see, let's see. Some explanations of like how it works. Uh, some alternatives they considered, I guess. Limitations and restrictions. Allows only a subset of JSON schema. Uh, first API response with a new schema will incur additional latency. Yeah. Takes under 10 seconds typically to process the first request. I'm not too worried about that. This is all kind of a batch background process. Uh, that's, that's what I'm mo moving towards versus, let me see, can I pull up local host, local most. <laughs> it's 8080. All right, so today, let's pull up a random thing, right? So today, this is all very interactive, how I process this. Um, so like I pull up the dialogue, I hit start, I might like inspect things. There is like the possibility to interact with this, and iterate, but yeah, it's a, it's a very like interactively designed operation. And that's what I wanna move away from. Um, back to my old filter. Okay. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I think I 
that. Um, I think I want to come back to this step. Let's let's actually do a little bit of coding. <laughs> Maybe we can get through um, this stuff. And then as we start working on the actual Lambda and it calling opening eye, we can come back to kind of working on um, the kind of prompt, the, the prompt engineering uh, kind of things. I think that'll be good. Uh, so. The way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to make a new crate. That's what I'm going to do, right? So we'd have one for audio transcriber, and video ingester. Uh, I guess in the actual glowing telegram project, this will be the first uh, Lambda that we're making. We had one in our uh, test project. Uh, let's see. Something like this. What are we going to call this? Summarize transcription. Voila. Uh, did that auto add to the top level cargo? Yes, good. Brilliant. Uh, and this is where I want to go and uh, pull open the example project and remind myself how I was doing lambdas in that. So QT AWS tests. Okay. We will need everything except probably not the step function SDK stuff. Instead, what are we going to need for this? That's okay. I'll come back to that. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about like pulling every dependency that we need. I'm just going to copy this main.rs and paste it in there. And then we're going to take out just about everything. Uh, yeah, we'll take that out. And that is technically a Lambda, not just technically, it, it is, it, it will be a Lambda function that uh, will do nothing other than print the emits it got some value. Okay. Uh, so back to the plan. is analyzing things. Uh, so we want to define this Lambda function in the Pulumi stack. And I think for now, I'm just going to put it here at the top level. Hmm. Actually, Let's do this. Let's define a, um, what are they called? A component resource for this whole operation, right? For the whole step function and the work that we're doing this. Um, which the whole purpose of this step function and all the stuff it's going to call is what? It is to Do the transcription and then what? I guess the other question is we have this audio transcriber job um, component. Do we want to expand on it? I mean, there's already several things in it. Maybe the job can just be focused on like the batch job. Will this step function have any other purpose other than, I guess it does, right? Because this is audio transcriber, but we are, we're transcribing audio and summarizing the transcription. Um, 
let's call this um, uh, stream, right? Because we're operating on, yes, all the individual video files, but we're operating them together as part of a, a, a one stream or one session of video. Um, then, Um, let's call it stream ingestion. Um, yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to want some things that I'm just going to copy paste here. Link. That does something. Uh, okay, so then it may need resources, but I'll, I'll come back to that. So this is going to be stream ingestion. Look, names are hard, but I think this is not the worst name. processing of video and audio data uh, transcription uh, and summarization oh uh, that's funny it's like you could use a kinesis data no 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 we don't need any of that um, okay, so, and then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define that Lambda function, right? So we're going to create a, um, none of that. How do I make a Lambda function? Lumi? Except, all oh right, 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 right. Uh, test project was in TypeScript. This is in is in Python. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit different. Lambda roll. There you go. Um, line policy. What line policy had we defined here? I see. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that yet. So let's. Uh, I mean, this sort of looks okay for a roll. We'll see how much it hates it once we go a little further in. Uh, yeah, create a lambda function. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be Python. Runtime is gonna be. Oh, I see. Interesting. The uh, the, the module there is alias. Should we? Can we try to use AWS native? Is that, is that equivalent? Looks like it. Yeah, custom AL something. I, I have confused the uh, everything code should be asset archive of bootstrap um stream ingestion I think this has to be dot dot we're gonna find out uh and this is gonna be summarized transcription Uh, is it going to be though? I think, um, 
all of the build artifacts are going to end up inside of a target folder here. Right here. Um, so more like this and summarize transcription. Pilot has given up on me. <laughs> mm, uh, and then handler doesn't matter because we're doing this, this bootstrap thing, the custom runtime. There's a lambda. And runtime. Check the docs here in a minute. Anyway, let's um roll. We don't need any environment variables, so I think we're done with that. Now let's see. What doesn't it like? Um Close and reopen that. We're a little bit, we're a little bit behind. What's going on here? Great. Why so slow? these installed? Why? Uh, oh, I see. Okay. So one installs the other. Okay. I don't like what's going on with this. No restart. Interesting. Uh, Python clear cache and reload window. Maybe this will be the kick that it needs to do things. We'll see. Uh, I think I really confused it by pasting <laughs> all that TypeScript code in uh, just to have a, a reference to start from. I guess I could have put them side by side, but whatever. Uh, okay, let's let's pull up Pulumi Docs since the kind of what am I trying to say? Uh, the the ability to see into things like this is something I. Uh, feel like I think between Rust and TypeScript uh, works pretty well and maybe it's something about how these modules are set up but it does not seem to be working the way I would like it to so let's see here 
Luanda. Luanda. Uh, and we're looking for a thing that lets us look at run times. Doesn't exist. This has an example. Oh, they just use a string. Interesting. I guess that's fine. Or what is going on here? What is building build artifacts? What does that mean? Okay, that's from Recitalizer. Okay. It's so slow. Mm. Oh, yeah, and again, we get this could not be resolved, which makes no sense. Um, See, we're not, we've not selected our virtual env. It's kind of odd. We have a virtual env. We actually, like, I, I clicked create virtual env uh, in the past. interpreter path fine okay bn ben uh python hey look bn hey things go away okay now okay so this exists in pulumi aws does it exist in pulumi uh in aws native Signs point to no. Okay, anyway. Uh, do I want to do this this way? Oh yeah, that's good. That's a good question. So in our... Um, In the AWS batch jobs, I create an ECR repository and I just anticipate that the image will be present. Um, in this case, I'm asking it to grab the compiled summarized transcription, which we can also like. So if I CD into summarized transcription, cargo. Build, car cargy, cargo build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of unused stuff, it's fine. Is this the right path? Uh, finished dev profile. So it's probably gonna be debugged then. Right, so I know a lot of stuff. Dot, dot, ls, target. Bug. Summarize transcription is there, along with other things. Uh, so this might be okay. We do have parent self on uh, these things. Inside these resources to the parent component resource. Yep. 
So if I see the infrastructure and I do blue me up, what happens? Uh, nothing because I did not reference stream ingestion, right? So no changes. Oh, uh, something changed. What changed? Uh, oh, I added the timeout stuff and that, okay. Uh, let's not do that yet. Uh, and we have a Pulumi update. Let's go ahead and run that. Uh, so in made.py, I need to actually like instantiate the stream ingestion, um, thing. Okay. So new stream ingestion. So that's not how you do that. <laughs> Stream ingestion. Seems fine. No, that's not the right import. It's not the right import at all. Does that do in the component? All right, so we use the name, we tag it into there. I guess that's fine. Um, this is something where it's interesting because, at least for now, I don't imagine that I will use this multiple times. Like the reason I'm I'm creating a class and doing all this is just to have a bucket to put all the resources in. This is kind of in the non-infrastructure equivalent of just making a function just to group related things together. Um, so you don't have just one big function, one big file with like every single resource that we're gonna deploy into AWS, right? Um, it may very, be, very well be the case that I'll eventually be able to uh, either reuse these as is or factor out common things into components that will be reusable. Um, but it's early days, right? So I'm just making something to have a, a place to group like things together uh, Just to make it a little bit more manageable. So if I do this now It should suggest that hey, I want to create a lambda function and I am role and uh, Role internal init got unexpected keyword argument assume role policy. So something was wrong. Um, policies, permission, assume role policy document is actually the art. Uh, do I have an example? I have many examples of this, right? So just, it should look something like this. Except it'll be Lambda. And eventually we will want to add policies so that the Lambda can actually do things, but we're not there yet. Uh, let's try that blue me up again. What else is wrong? Uh, attribute error custom AL2, that makes sense. That's not, that's not a thing that exists. Uh, can we get an autocomplete? No. No, this is just all the things. So if I go to runtime, here we go. Uh, what was it? Oh, I see. So this is like the actual values are all, all uppercase. So that, that's the value I was looking for. But yeah, being able to do that, being able to like go to runtime and see what's there was why I was so hung up on like, should I use AWS or AWS native? Well, if I use AWS native, I can't click on that. So it probably doesn't actually exist. Unexpected ac asset property value for bootstrap. Okay. So how is this different from what we did before? So I did archive asset file asset. 
Uh huh. Go here. Is there an example? No. If I go here, is there an example? No. Um. Assets is a dictionary. Okay, what was the what was the error? Unexpected asset property value for Bootstrap. This might be a um, something that works different for AWS Native, maybe. Do we have an example where the code is not in line? And uh, here it is where code is S3 bucket and S3 key. Okay. Here it is where it's, oh, is this, um, oh yeah, those are, those are both from Pulumi. So, reporting types. Function code args. Uh -huh. uh, long term, eventually, what I want to, what I will be doing is I will have everything be just containers. I will eventually want to add like ECR rep repository for things and we'll see yeah see exactly that will work but uh dockerize lambda functions seem better let's try googling this error <laughs> uh hold on gloomy No one has ever gotten that error, apparently. Google seems to think so. Yeah. Oh, uh, what am I doing wrong here? So how do we use asset archive? There are no results for asset ar mm. Yeah, I don't believe you, Flumi. Here they are right here. Asset Archive. <laughs> hey, Brainless. Good morning. How goes it? I'm trying to figure out how to uh, deploy a Lambda function to AWS. Blooming. Uh, when it's a binary. And uh, it seems that even though we did it this way here in TypeScript for this pro for this test project, it doesn't seem to like it over here. What does it mean? How's your morning been going, Brainless? Asset property value. Okay, so there's something about what this does. Uh, all is well, struggling. Well, all, so all is well, but struggling. Trying to solve a Code Wars 2 Q expression transpiler problem without, without how, knowing how a tokenizer works. 
Um, what is Code Wars 2? <laughs> Do I have one now? And a trans expression transpiler problem, huh? Not knowing how a tokenizer works. I feel like I'm probably lacking context to understand. <laughs> that sound, I mean, Code Wars 2 sounds like a game. 2Q is the level, the lower the number, the harder I see. So, a game then. Um, currently ranked as 4Q. Interesting. So why doesn't it like, like it seems like the whole asset archive and file asset stuff is kind of like agnostic to what's going on here. I wonder maybe what, what if I just do this? Maybe it's AWS native uh, that doesn't like this. Um, in fact, what if I just do this and then I'm referring to this anywhere now? Okay. Let's try. Try that. Gonna be right back. Yeah, me too. I uh, I'm also gonna be right back in just a couple of minutes because it's been an hour. Uh, and we'll figure out. Oh, I see. Okay. Figure this out when I return.